Alibaba recently released an impressive new model called Ace++, which makes image editing and modification incredibly easy using both text and reference images. With Ace++, you can seamlessly transfer object onto a table, generate consistent character faces with customized outfits, and place logos or characters onto any object. I can see a lot of wide range of practical applications like printing logos on t-shirts with an AI influencer for branding and e-commerce and editing background image to put your product for marketing. It's very similar to the in-context Laura that was released recently, but after testing both, I find that Ace++ is a little bit easier to use and it produces better results with more intuitive prompting compared to in-context Laura. In this video, I'll walk you through how to set up Ace++ and guide you step by step through the workflow to run these models effectively. So a little bit more about Alibaba's Ace++ models, it includes three specialized models designed as a powerful toolkit for image editing. The first model is the portrait, which is optimized for face swapping and allows you to retain facial features consistently across different images. The second model is called the subject, which is built for maintaining the consistency of specific objects across different scenes. This is useful when you want to transfer a reference image onto a target image, such as placing a logo on various objects or ensuring that an object remains visually identical across multiple contexts. The third one is called local editing and it allows you to enhance or modify specific parts of the image. This model is particularly useful for tasks like restoring blurred areas, fixing parts of an image to better fit the background using a mask, or fine tuning just adjustments. Interestingly, in their example of showcasing this image editing, they demonstrate both modifying portraits and putting the subject logo on different objects. It's a little bit unclear why they didn't use the portrait and the subject model for this, but I'm guessing that they're trying to say the local edit model is quite versatile. The ACE++ models are actually fine-tuned on top of the Flux Fill model, which serves as the base model required for running the workflow. Let's download the ACE++ models and place them in the appropriate directory. These models are available in Hugging Face and you'll need to download three specific models, each found under different folders, Local Editing, Portrait, and Subject. Once downloaded, you have to place these models in the LoRa folder inside ComfyUI, ComfyUI slash model slash LoRa. For better organization, I created a separate ACE++ folder inside the LoRa directory. Additionally, make sure you have the Flux Fill model installed as it's the necessary base model for ACE++. Now let's load the workflow and test out these models to see what we can do. You can download the workflow from the GitHub link in the description below and simply drag and drop it into the Comfy UI to load it. Once the workflow is loaded, you'll notice that in the load division model node, we have the flux fill model set up. To load the ACE++ LoRa models, I'm using the power LoRa loader. In this case, I have the subject LoRa model loaded. While I'm not using any other LoRa models here, you could try the flux turbo LoRa for faster generation, though keep in mind that it might slightly impact quality. Since we're using flux, we also need the dual clip loader to handle the text encoding. And additionally, the clip model and V are inputted into the Anything Anywhere node. This allows them to be used globally throughout the workflow, even if they aren't directly connected to the inputs of certain nodes. In the next section of the workflow, we have to prepare the images side by side so that Flux Fill and the LoRa models can properly in-paint the image. I actually stole this part from Sebastian's Ace++ workflow, so shout out to him for that. The main goal here is to position the target image and reference image next to each other. We first resize the target image to 960 by 960, which seems to be chosen because it just below 1024 by 1024. It makes it a good balance between high resolution and efficient processing. We also use the checkbox here to make sure the aspect ratio is preserved. And if necessary, we have to downscale the image to fit within the dimensions. We can actually check the image size using the preview image node right here. And if we download this preview image by right clicking and saving image, we'll see that the width is 960 and the height is 745. This happens because our original image had a larger width and we have to maintain its proportion during resizing. 
Next, we need to attach the reference image to the right side of the target image. And to do this, we use the same height as a resized target image and concatenate both images using the image concatenate node. We have to set the direction to right because we want the reference image to the right side of the target image. You can see the final preview of the concatenated image right here, but we still need to add the mask to this image. So first we need to resize the mask because we need to fit the mask into the resize target image. So we have to resize the mask to the same as the resize target image, which we scaled it to 960 by 745. Then we also have to create a full mask by attaching an empty black image to the right side of the resize mask. This black section acts as a placeholder, ensuring that the mask aligns correctly with the concatenated target and reference images and you can see the preview of the mask and the final concatenated images. Ultimately, this entire setup is what will feed into the flux fill in painting workflow to generate our final result. After creating this final mask and combined image, we still need to provide prompts to guide flux fill as it processes uh, based on natural language. The prompt you use is crucial and it impacts the final result. I typically use the phrase reference image, but in the example flow, it uses the curly braces image, which seems to indicate the original target image, and you should experiment with different wording to see how it affects the output and find what works best for your edits. Once flux fill processes the image, we crop out the first part of the combined image since that's the final output we want. We do this by cropping from the zero by zero and with the width and height of the target image, ensuring that we only extract the target image part from the combined image. Now that we're done with the boring explanations, let's run the workflow and check out some results. Let's go through a image generation to print this logo onto this nice orange car. First, we right click the target image, open it in the mask editor and paint over the area where we want the logo to appear, then save. We also need to add a prompt, something like attach this logo from a reference image to an orange car. Now let's start the workflow and look at that. The logo is printed on the car with the correct orientation to fit naturally. We can also attach a logo onto a t-shirt on our AI influencer model to using the same process. I'll create a mask over the t-shirt and run the workflow. And there we have it. The logo is printed on the t-shirt perfectly. Imagine if you wanted to build a web app that allows users to print their brand logos onto various objects. This workflow would be a great foundation for that. We can also test if text-based logos work properly. I have a text logo that says AI or bust, so let's try printing it onto the t-shirt. And that works well too. However, I notice it's appearing as an orange logo instead of text. And I remember that I'm using an old prompt and I have to fix that and I'm going to update the prompt to attach this reference image as a logo with black text. The orange car in the previous prompt probably made the model recognize it as an orange text, and we can see that updating the prompt fixed that issue. So the model correctly understands the prompt and generate the expected output. Now let's say if you want to place your store's premium bottle on a table, let's test that by masking the area, and it works perfectly. Here, the reference image replaces an existing object, but let's see if it works in an empty area here. And it does a decent job there as well. If you adjust the mask size to better fit the perfume bottle, the result still works, but from my experience, quality tends to decrease as we reduce the mask size. That makes sense since smaller objects are harder for models to render with fine details. Other than this, we can also swap a model's outfit by painting over the clothes. For example, a skirt. Let's compare the Ace++ model with the clothing workflow I created previously and uploaded on YouTube. You can see that my previous workflow, which uses Flux Fill and Redux, does a decent job of capturing patterns, but the Ace++ model adds a better lighting and depth to the fabric. It also performs well with full body outfit and dresses as you can see here, so you might want to test it out of different styles and see how it handles various clothing designs. Obviously, I haven't tested every scenario such as face swapping with the Ace++ portrait model or making local edits or running the workflow without a reference image, but I'm planning to explore more use cases after this video to see what else I can do. 
If you discover anything interesting, let me know in the comments below and feel free to show off your work in our Discord channel as well. I hope you found this video helpful to run the ACE++ models in Kung Fu UI. If you have any questions or suggestions, please feel free to leave it down in the comments below or tell us in the Discord channel. I'll come back with more useful AI content in the next video and thanks for watching.